Hey everybody, welcome to Health Hackers episode number seven. I'm Gemma Evans, I'm a television journalist and a presenter here in the UK and this is my series devoted to meeting and interviewing and getting inside the minds of leading health and wellness figures like my guest today, Roger Frampton. Hey. Roger is a body coach. He's all about moving the body, how our bodies were designed to move. He's also a model and an author of the flexible body. We're going to be talking about that later. And he's with us for the next 30 minutes. So you can ask him anything you like about your body and about why we should be moving like three-year-olds. Is that right? That's, that's right. That's something we'll come on to as well. And if you're watching on Facebook, instead of listening to the audio podcast, you'll be able to see Roger demo some of the key moves from the book. So stay with us for that and tag anybody you know who you think should watch this in the comment section. I'm going to be looking at my laptop a lot so I can see what you're saying and all your questions and I can put them to Roger. So like I said, we've got him for 30 minutes, so let's make the most of it. And if you can hear us loud and clear, hit the thumb button so we know that you're there and you can hear us properly. Okay, let's get going because I want to begin by talking about your backstory. Right, well, okay. So Roger has quite an unusual backstory. You wanted to be a bodybuilder. Yeah. And then you got scouted to be a catwalk model. Exactly. And how did that change your body goals, I guess? Yeah, completely. I mean, like, I'm 34, so when I was about 18, 19, the aspiration for me then was Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, Wesley Snipes, any, like, action figure that I was seeing in movies, that would be my goal. So I noticed they all had six-packs and massive chests. So as, as an 18-year-old, I was like... I'm just going to go straight to the weight section and I'm going to get as big as I possibly can. And big as possibly. <laughs> yeah. But then, so then when you were asked to be a model, yeah. you couldn't be big anymore. No. That for, well, for models, when I, was, when I was about 19, so this is over a decade ago, modelling's changed a lot since then. So you had to fit in a size 38 suit. So obviously I was a little bit bigger than that, so I needed to, to trim down. So to do that, I had to stop doing weights completely because I didn't want to get any bigger. So I just, from then, that just moved my focus completely to body weight exercises. So then you had to be kind of lean and you were doing these body weight exercises. Mm -hmm. And then there's a bit I like in the book where you talk about a six-year-old gymnast right, who like, okay. suddenly became this inspirational figure for you. Yeah, yeah, completely. So if you think of um, body weight, for me the ultimate of body weight is gymnastics. They're like extremely flexible, extremely strong. Um, and f for me, like after body weight, after calisthenics, I really got into gymnastics. Um, so I went to a gymnastics class, I thought I was quite strong, uh, met this little six-year-old girl called Grace, and she just did this awesome bridge with her legs straight, and I looked at her confused, and I was like, how are you doing that? <laughs> and uh, realised I wasn't flexible, I wasn't really strong, um, so yeah, it brought out a completely different um, a light in the way I trained. And so one of your key messages is about learning from children, how they move and how our bodies are supposed to move. So when you talk about how our bodies are supposed to move, what do you mean by that exactly? So when I talk about how the human is designed to move, if you think about a kid, um, who, to, who or if you think about yourself, let's just take you for example, so I'm going to ask you the question and you guys can put it in the box below, who taught you how to move? So that's the question I'm asking you, who taught you how to move? Have a think about it for a second, put it in the box, and then we'll come back to that. Put it in the comment section. I'm looking at the feed right now, so put your questions for Roger in there. And it'd be lovely to hear where you guys are from, so stick that down as well. Yeah, the great where thing are you about Facebook from? Live is like we can speak to people all over the globe, so it'd be really exactly. nice to know where you guys are. And if you're listening from. to the audio podcast, we're just happy that you, you're listening to the replay. Absolutely. And um, when we get to the movements, I'll try and be as descriptive as possible when telling you what Roger's doing, so then you can imagine and try and copy at home. Okay, so let's okay. talk about the Frampton Method, because Roger's book is all about the Frampton Method, and this is like um, a set of exercises and stretches that you do at home so you can get lean and supple. And so what was the reason behind the method, and why did you think now is a good time to release a book about that? Um, it, it just seemed right. So I, I did a TED Talk. The TED Talk was called Why Sitting Down Destroys You, and the purpose of the TED Talk is move like you once could, and that's my message. So if you want to follow the Frampton Method, then your goal is to move like you used to be able to move. So that's a really quick way to know if you're following so the method. So how do you know what, what or how you used to move? 
Well, we've got, we got to wait for them to, uh, to answer the, the earlier question of who taught you how to move. Come on, people, tell me who taught you how to move. So one, once we get a couple Didn't of... Did we teach ourselves we get to move? Like, you just know. kind well, of, like, roll what, about Let's see what they say. Let's see what they say. I don't know. Yeah, come on, people, tell us. Tell us who taught you to move. Come on, Patrick, Mike, I can see you there. So and basically, in, in this chat, we don't want any tourists. So a tourist is someone that comes into a chat, looks around, takes some pictures, but doesn't really get involved. I want you guys to get involved. I want you to be like, right, I'm here and this is what I want to say. So just stick it in. And if you're commenting on the lighting, it's because we've made the lighting work, believe me. We, we had a bit of a dark room, but now we've made it brighter and we're right by a window. And um, if we look overexposed, it's nice, just the sunshine outside. That's yeah, all. Just Stay bright. with us. Listen to what we're saying. Listen to what you're saying. shining right now. Oh, <laughs> I'm glowing. Like, <laughs> someone says I look like a ghost. I am actually just very pale, though. So that, that could just be my actual skin tone. Um, right, so I've had some questions as well from social media about movements. Um, from Twitter as well, some questions. We're going to get on to the movements and so stay with us because Roger's going to demo some of the movements live for you. But I want to know yeah. about um, your thoughts on the gym because I love working out and mm -hmm. lots of people use the gym, but right. your whole thing is like shunning the gym really, isn't it? Yeah, I, I say shunning the gym, but you can you can still go to a gym. For me, a gym is a great place to, to go where everyone else is doing the same thing. So if you like exercise, you can go to a gym. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't go to a gym. It means when you go there, still the focus is your body so whether you're so instead of you know picking up the nearest weight or going to the nearest machine or the running machine you can just go to a stretch area or an, an area which is quite matted and comfortable and you can stretch your body without needing to use the equipment so absolutely still go to the gym for all the motivational purposes that you go to the gym just think about more of your body instead of using the actual machines so eve says her dad taught her um how to move and how to swing on a trapeze Awesome. He was lucky. That's cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, let's keep talking a little bit about... Okay, so there's this thing in the book where you right. say um, unconscious exercise is a form of self-harm. Absolutely. What do you mean by that? What's unconscious exercise? So a, con a conscious movement is one where you've decided to do it. So right now, as I move my hand in this direction, this is me being completely aware of the movement that's happening within my body. Unconscious exercise is for me to just do this all over the place and have no idea that I'm actually doing it. So a really quick way to do this is when you're walking down the street next, you kind of, are you thinking about how you walk or are you looking around you? Now it doesn't mean that you need to pay full attention to your body when you're walking, but you should have a slight awareness of how you're walking as well as your surroundings. Is running on a treadmill unconscious exercise? If you're not focused on your body, yes. Okay, and so are your, are all of your movements and everything that you advocate in the Frampton yeah. Method all about just doing it really slowly, really mindfully. Yeah, so do you know the story of the hare and the tortoise? I don't. Is, you it, don't is, it, is, it, the tortoise? is it biblical? It's or like, is it, no, it's like a really, it's it's a really famous, like, I probably I mean, know it's a parable. parable. I, probably, I probably know it from Sunday school. <laughs> right, tell, so, tell us. So the hare and the tortoise is a story. Actually, you know what, you guys, I know you know the story of the hare and the tortoise. Who knows it? So... Who won, the hare or the tortoise? I reckon the tortoise won. This is just going to come up like that. Someone's just going to be like, bang. Uh, who won, the hare or the tortoise? Go. Anyone? Come on. Come on, Mike. Come on, Eve. Okay. First person gets a free copy of the book. There might be, there <laughs> might be a time delay anyway. Let's keep talking because people want to get on. Oh, oh, Eve says the tortoise. Tortoise, done. Eve, you won. <laughs> Eve, you won. Woo! Make sure you send your address to Gemma on a private chat and I'll get that book out to you. Free book Boom. coming to you. <laughs> that wasn't even Thank planned. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! Excellent. So why did All the tortoise right. win? He the was tortoise so won because he was completely conscious of how he moved. The hare was just trying to get a six pack, trying to lose weight, trying to have all those fitness goals. But the tortoise was like, I've got my whole life to do this. I've got my whole life. I'm just going to chill. I'm just going to crawl along and I'll get there in the end. The tortoise is all about longevity. He's focused on keeping his body moving for the rest of his life, not for the next six weeks. Oh, look, Christopher. Well, that's my interpretation. Chris anyway. <laughs> Christopher got tortoise too. The hare got too complacent. Got too complacent. Too complacent. He, he was blasting himself for his six weeks. He wanted his transformation. He wanted to look ripped. He's thinking about how he looked rather than how he felt. Um, one of the other things I really liked about your book was your honesty. Okay, because that's cool. 
Roger in his book talks about how this isn't a quick fix and that by doing his stretches and natural body movements, it's all about undoing the years and years of damage that we've done to ourselves. So it's going to take time. But give us an idea of how much damage we're doing every day from sitting on chairs or wearing big clumpy shoes or the other things that you talk about in your TED talk as well. Well, okay. So yeah, if you, if you think about your day to day, like what's the, I always say, what's the first thing you do when, when you get home and you've had a long day? You want to sit down. Sit down. What's the first thing you do when you're going to eat? Sit, sit down. down. What's the first thing you do when you're going to watch TV? Sit yeah. down. What's the first thing you do when you're going to sort of write? Or, you it's know, what we're doing now. Yeah, we're sitting down. We're going to stand up in a minute. It doesn't mean, gonna... Now, this doesn't mean that sitting down is bad. It was, okay. That was just like a catchy title, so you could really start to understand a more in-depth chat further down the line. So it's like sitting down, yeah, it destroys us because we're doing it all the time. It's fine to sit down every now and then, but if you're sat in one position all the time, then you're going to cause problems. And now just to say to standing up is going to help you or reverse this is not true. Standing up for long periods of time also causes long issues down the line. What is it? Just, does it cause shortening so of our muscles? It's just, it's just a repetitive position that you just do over and over again. Now, you are, if you're watching this, a human being. You are designed for constant movement. You have over 800 muscles in your body and you're designed to move. There's nothing that you can do about it. Everything about us, if we open up a human body and we see all the joints and how they're you know, structured together, we know the human body is designed to move. Positioning and how, like, how we sit in our day-to-day -day life doesn't relate to how we're designed to move. So we need to fall, fall more in line, and the most in-line person or people are kids. If you look at the way they move, you can see they're not structured by work or by culture. They just do it as they're designed to do, which brings us back to the question, and I think someone answered it already, the person that taught you how to move was yourself. You taught yourself how to walk. I you think I said that, actually. You did? I saw someone else. <laughs> You're not getting a coffee. <laughs> no, I've already read it, I've already read it. Okay, yeah, we yeah, taught free ourselves. Coffee too. Yeah. Yeah. So, we, so we taught ourselves, any kid at like the age of you know, two, two, one to two years old, up, up to about four years old is when I talk about, because that's the age where you go to school, where you get taught to sit down for long periods of time. So if you want to see how a human is, is, is moving in its perfect environment, if you look at a two to three year old, you'll see it's, it, can fully, it can now fully walk, mm. but then it's about to be changed into a, a cultural structure, which is schooling, education, work, which is not how we're designed to move. Nigel's, Nigel's made a comment saying three-year-olds are fearless. They don't assess the risks and end up falling and hurting themselves. Should we really move like them? No, no, it's ha yeah, because absolutely. I fall over daily. If you want to see more fails, check out my Instagram page. I fail all the time. I always fall over. I think learning, kids learn as they fall over. The only problem is they don't really hurt themselves. Humans or adults hurt themselves because when they fall over, they're so tight that they end up causing damage to their body. So what we need to do is learn to fail again, but without hurting ourselves. Right, we're going to move on to some questions now from all of you guys. Um, Facebook is, if you've just joined us and you're wondering what's going on, I'm talking to Roger Frampton. This is Health Hackers Episode 7. He's a movement coach, he's a personal trainer, he's an international model and an author of The Flexible Body, and he's answering your questions about how to stretch and how to get your body moving like it was once supposed to move, or it is still supposed to move, but it used Someone to Someone already won a book. Someone already won a book. You just missed someone win a book. It was Eve. She gave us a brilliant answer to the story about Quick. the hair and the tortoise. Um, Patrick wants to know, are martial arts good for stretching? Um, it depends. Are you focused on the feeling as you stretch? So you, there's stretching in martial arts, there's stretching in gymnastics, there's stretching in yoga. They are all different f forms. You can call it whatever you want. But as long as you're focused on the stretch itself, as long as you're not feeling pain when you're stretching, as long as you're feeling the feeling of a stretch, which means that you're stretching, then, yeah, as long as you're completely you're conscious, conscious. it's fine. It's all about being conscious. Uh, yeah. Rob says, Roger, I've been stretching on and off for 20 years. I do loads of cycling and tennis. 20. A year ago, I started having knee problems, and my physio gave me a stretching program, but I can't get the flexibility I want. What am I doing wrong? What's the key to getting maximum flexibility and maintaining it? Okay, so it depends what kind of area that you're trying to get flexible in. So usually you don't get someone that's flexible and you get someone that's tight. Usually people are flexible in specific movements. For example, you'll get someone who's really good at squatting, 
terrible at touching their toes or you're really good at front support and then able to move the, the way they move their spine but just terror like just got really tight calves for example so if we always tend to do the exercises or the stretches that we really like or that we get good mm -hmm. at and we tend to forget about the ones that we're not so good at so the one the stretches that you're specifically doing there's millions of stretches there's millions you know in my book is like 100 that's yeah. that's nothing compared to there are billions of stretches you know if you want stretches go on youtube and type in stretches for the body the key is is about being conscious when you're doing them and copying how kids move so if you look at the way that a kid moves again when it's three years old we can see they're really flexible in certain positions so instead of thinking about the stretch think about the goal is in to get those positions back can you sit cross-legged comfortably without pain can you sit in a squat without pain can you if touch he can't, your toes without pain? If he can't, should he just keep... Is the message just keep doing it? Keep so trying, can? but don't feel pain. Okay. Keep trying as a stretch, but again, try different variations for stretching. You can try static stretching, and you can try little bounces in the stretch. So there's, there's so many different forms of stretching. And there's also, instead of stretching everything straight forward, so instead of stretching your legs straight, turn your foot out, turn your foot in... You know, take your foot out to the side. There's and so, so over many time, different... he will get more flexible. Yeah, like, he, he the body will. has to adapt. Is that right? The, that's, and that's the phenomenal thing about stretching. You know, what what would be the point of stretching if we didn't adapt? There'd be no point whatsoever. The genius is, is that we adapt. Like everyone, every single person can become flexible and can get their movement back if they put in the time. And you don't really have to put in a lot of time. Just consistently do it every day. Okay. Every day. Every day. Every day. How long for every day? I, in my book, I just put 10 minutes. 10 minutes a day. But the, the, the key behind that is it's consistency. You've got to be consistent. And when you're consistent, you'll get it 100%. Okay, let's get on to some demonstrations now. Because some of these questions coming in require wow. a bit of a demonstration from right. Roger. Um, the first question is from Ula. And she says, a lot of us hold jobs where we have to sit in front of a computer for eight to ten hours a day. How yep. much stretching do we need to do to counteract a normal working day? And which exercises are the most effective? Okay. So we can get up. Do you want to get up for this one and show her some yeah, exercises? Let's do it. Or, exercises for undoing the kind of slouched over a desk position for ten hours. Okay. So let, let's just look at the sitting position that we sat in and let's break it down a little bit. What's going on in our bodies as we sit? So right now. My, my legs are in a bent leg position, like everyone else is right now. If you're sitting down at a chair, so watch this, you see the, the, the legs are bent. So this is, this is already causing tight, ham, tight hamstrings or tight back of the legs or calves, however you want to look at it. We're also closing the front of our hips. Yeah. Okay, so think of everything in there like this, we want to do the opposite. So we want to get a straight leg stretch. We want to get an open hip stretch. So there's two things. And we want to get a shoulder back stretch. So even here, I'm leaning forward for 10 minutes. I want to do something yeah. that's the opposite to this. So those are, these are the three key things that we're going to look at today. The three opposing stretches. Three opposing stretches. To sitting down. Because okay. right, just, just sitting down and stretching our bodies in the same way that we're sitting down. It's really making me want to stand up now because I feel, I feel Perfect. sorry so for let's my do it. Like so that's, okay. a, that's a good we're thing We're going to stand standing. up, everyone. I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see Roger. But oh, keep right. asking your questions. The light is yeah. better over here, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure you can tell. We're not, right. not ghosts anymore. Let me turn. That. Yeah, we can see you. Cool. So as you can see me now, I'm stood up. So that means my hips are no longer in this closed position. My hips are forward, which means the front of my hips are open. So one of the first things that opposes sitting is standing. So as you stand, like in my TED talk, I talk about squeezing your butt. What this really does, it pushes your hip forward. So as you push your hip forward, you open the front of your hips. As you squeeze your butt, that means that you won't hurt your back when you're doing it. Okay, so Make sure throughout the day you spend some time standing up. Don't just sit down all day. Spend some time. Five, Keep standing minutes. up. Restretch those. Yeah, okay. stretch and then sit back down. All right. Yeah? And what about the back and the shoulder area? So the back and the shoulder, a really good one, is you take your hand like this and you slide it as high as you can up your spine. So, like that position. Okay. Okay, so this is what you, And now if you want to add something to this, take your other hand and you're trying to grab your elbow... Now, but this might be over time, so don't worry if you can't do this. Okay. And you're trying to grab your elbow into this position. So I've got this handed by my shoulder. And where are you base. feeling the stretch now? So right now, I'm feeling the stretch on the front of my shoulder. Yeah. If you feel pain when you do this, don't do it. Do an alternative. Um, 
and you might not, it might not be that you can feel the front of your shoulder, you might be tight in a different area. Okay, remember we talked about stretching the opposite to this, which is gonna open this shoulder back up. Okay. Yeah, make sure to do the other side as well, and notice which side feels tighter. And what was the, what was the third exercise? What was the third, the third exercise was a straight leg. Okay. So you need to learn how to touch the floor with your palms. I mean, you should be able to wake up in the morning Stretch down and place your palms on the floor without bending your legs. So what you're aiming for is something like that. Every morning? But you, you, know, you should be able to do it in the morning without even warming up. Okay. Right? So that, that's, as kids, they're very bendy, completely from yeah. folding calf. Think yeah. of my nephew. He's a lot, a lot of people are very tight, in the, very tight in the car, very tight in the shoes, very tight in the hamstrings. This is because of um, wearing shoes, again, sitting down all day. Um, strengthening, running exercises gets his, area, gets his area very strong but not necessarily mobile. So Ula could do those exercises? So a very simple one, and I, uh, this is, again this is so basic, is to literally strain your legs and hang and hold. Just hang there for a hang while. Hang and hold. Really, a really good way to do this is to squeeze the quad, the front of your leg, and you're going to sque squeeze this muscle here by pushing your knees backwards mm -hmm. behind you and locking your knees and then you hang into it. And when you squeeze this muscle here, it helps you relax the back of your legs as you hang into it. Uh, Eve wants to know, what if you're over 60? What if you're over 60? Well, I like that question. One of my inspirations is uh, a 94-year-old lady called Joanna Quads. So have a little Google of that. She's the world's oldest gymnast. Wow. Which, and uh, she's phenomenally flexible. So if you're in your 60s, you've still got three decades on her. So uh, once, once you're inspired by elder people, you won't really see yourself as uh, it being yeah. too late. I'll put some information about Joanna when I write up the article about this interview on my website afterwards. Um, Rosie wants to know, have you got any advice for stretching to keep flexible when you're heavily pregnant? Um, I, so apologies, I cannot advise on that. Oh, okay. Is that, that's a medical, yeah. medical I, yeah. issue. I'm not going into that area. <laughs> as, much, as much as I love to, and it's important, there, there, are, there are certain contradictions. Uh, sure. When it, when it comes to when it comes to pregnancy, and I would, you want to speak to a doctor. Uh, Dave wants to know what can he do to strengthen his core because he's had some lower back issues. Okay, I'm going to be really controversial here. Stop using the word core. It doesn't really mean anything. Really? I've worked for. I know you hear it all the time, and people are going to be like, "What do you mean? It's all about strengthening your core." Now, I've worked with world class athletes, with gymnasts, ex circus performers. They don't really talk about core. They talk about self-awareness of your body. It's way more important than this, this term core. No one, no one really uses it, no one really knows what it means. Yeah. Okay, the strengthening of the back. What was, what was the fully question and I'll answer it. How can he strengthen his core? Okay, focus on specific movements, being able to hold those movements. For example, a gymnastic front support teaches you to push through your back and strengthen the, your upper back and your shoulder muscles. It also teaches you how to squeeze your butt and to open your pelvis. So if by doing that, your core will sit in the middle and your back will be flat. But you, you won't really strengthen your core. A lot, of, a lot of the exercises that I do, people go, oh my God, you must have like a really strong core to be able to hold that. Not really. Is there anything you can show us for strengthening that kind of central area? Um, yeah, we, we can look at the front support. Okay. Let's look at the front support. So usually, what I want to show you is, again, in, in yoga or in fitness, what we'll get is, is a plank. And I'm sure you guys know the exercise called a plank. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you the gymnastic version of that, which is called a front support. Okay. Okay, so let's look at a plank, which is, I know it's common, it's called a core exercise. But in gymnastics, the front support is for your shoulders and your upper back, right? Okay. Is this for strengthening or stretching out? Well, it could, be, it could be both. As you push, it might stretch your shoulders. Again, this is going to depend on whether you're tight in your upper back or okay. shoulders and whether you've done this before. If you haven't done this before, it's going to feel like this is yeah. a nightmare. All okay. right. So, the front support. Okay. So let's look, let's look at it. So if we look at a basic plank, like again, most people will, will put a personal trainer or anyone in fitness will talk about this as a core exercise. So just being able to maintain this position. Mm -hmm. right? So this is the plank. Now in gymnastics, we'll turn the hands out, we'll press through the upper back, so I'm rounding my upper back. Hmm. Can you see that? Yeah. So as I round my upper back, which is basically doing this movement, it hides my shoulder blades and my upper back goes completely round. So I'm really focused on this section of my body, 
rather than anything really going on with the stomach. Christopher wants to know, are these exercises best to do with or without footwear? Um, either or, whatever you're comfortable in. Um, whenever I train, I'll, I'll take my shoes off, but really because I want to be more aware of feeling within like my feet and all that area. But so, sometimes wearing a pair of trainers with some heels on, for example, for example, when I'm sitting in a squat position, having a little heel in my trainer really helps um, put my foot at a little edge. So if you're a little bit tight in your ankles, sitting in a squat in this position, remember feet straight forward, no yoga poses. No, no yoga poses. No, I quite like doing the other one. Is, yeah, but that's for uh, yoga. This is for three year olds. And so when you're squatting like that, why is that better? Why? Because this is how kids sit down. Is it, so that's just better for the, our biology, our right, bodies it's just, like it's it. It's not that it's better, this is just how kids sit down. But what benefits would we get from sitting down like that? Um, if, well, if you look at um, like tribes where yeah. they don't wear shoes and they don't walk around on man-made materials, Again, they sit down like this. This is a position that you're designed to sit in, and it's also your position that you're designed to defecate in. So yeah. this is a position, the reason people turn their feet out into this position is because they've become so tight in the front of their ankles yeah. that you've got no alternative but you to stick your feet out. The problem with doing that is your knee will start to roll in and you'll start to feel pain on the inside of your knee. So if you're getting a lot of knee pain when squatting, it's because your ankles become tight so you're compensating by doing this position. Now, there's, again, there's nothing wrong with this position. Yeah. It's not that this is better. It's just that if you can't sit like this, then you're you're, com you're, you're compromising tight. like what the position that you're designed to do. So if you look at any kid, or if you look at any adult that hasn't come into contact with Western society, they're very comfortable to sit like this. Sitting like this, a lot of people call this the Asian squat. It's just Asians are smarter and more culturally in line with how we're designed to move. Uh, Richard's got a question. He says every personal trainer he's ever had has had a different view on whether or not you should stretch before exercise, mm -hmm. before like doing a workout. What's your view on that? I, I can only t again. I can I can only tell you my. Um, I'll do another stretch while I'm talking to you. So yeah. You what's this one? But this is What's just sitting that? cross legged. Again, yeah. you might relate to this as a as a yoga move. This is something that they do in yoga where they just sit cross legged. Again, kids are very comfortable sitting cross legged. You can see my knee sitting right above my foot. Again, any knee pain in this position, a really good tip is to take the shins further away from you. And that will take out any pressure that you feel in the knee. So again, I'll show you that again. So if you're sitting like this, you feel knee pain, take your shins out. To come back to your question, I stretch right at the beginning, but it might not work for you. Like I love stretching before I do like any other training. But also, stretching is part of my training so I don't see stretching as something different yeah so I can't say I stretch it's all incorporated stretching, for you. stretching is everything I do is based around stretching you know I used to go into gymnastics and I thought that all gymnasts were strong I was like gymnasts are just so strong what I realized is you'll never find a gymnast that can't sit in the splits they're not strong I always wanted to do the splits They're when I used to do flexible. gymnastics. Yeah. I just couldn't quite get there. Is it just and the, oh, and then I read in your book that actually that's just my brain stopping me from doing it. It's it would actually come with time or yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah anybody can do the splits if you work on it. 100%. How long could it take me to do the splits if I if I how just practice every day? Thirty three. How how long is a human designed to uh, live for? Well, these days, hundred exactly. So you got you got. Oh, I've got a long time to years. go. Yeah. But talking of age, someone pointed out that Joanna, the gymnast you mentioned, right. has been a gymnast all her life. So right. what if someone started your stretch protocol at like sixty or seventy? Is that okay? I mean, yeah, can they get I'm, benefits? The, 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 the thing is, is is why you're doing it, and that's that's the key, and what you really want to what you really want to get like from this conversation. Yeah. For example, like, what's your fitness goal, Gemma? Uh, just to be strong and healthy. Okay, like to be strong, to be healthy, lose weight? Uh, no. No. Okay. I don't think just, I need to lose I'm, weight. I'm just uh, saying this, what? This, this is, <laughs> no, no, no. This, I'm just, I'm just going to shout out some fitness goals. Get weight. Um, get weight. Get, yeah, get maybe weight. I want to get, get some strong. weight. Get strong. And lose just, weight. Um, well, um, no, no, not okay, you. Okay, for other not people. You, yeah, all right. Goals. So general goals are like lose weight. Change the way your body looks. Yes. Right. Get beach ready. You know, or yeah. lose weight. I want to just say, like, I don't, I don't advise anyone to be losing weight or to try start to change their body, or even to get strong. 
You know, I'm doing this because I know two thirds of 75 year olds suffer from chronic disease and that by the time we're 75, it's highly likely we're going to be sat in a, in a care home for the last two decades of our lives. That's why I stretch every yeah. day because I refuse to be the person who didn't take care of his body now in order to not get the benefits later. So I'm gonna turn I, the... I want 70 year, old, 70 year old Roger to be as flexible as possible. I'm gonna turn the camera around. I'm gonna come and sit down on the floor. We can finish up. Hey Facebookers, we got cut off. We've come back to say goodbye and, and wrap up with a few final questions. If you've got any more questions for Roger, let us know. But one thing I really wanna know is to do with nutrition, because we've not discussed this, no. but everyone in health and wellness has a view on fitness and nutrition because they go so hand in hand. Right. Um, when you were a model, were you ever told what to eat? Or what not to eat? No, not really. No, if you think of like any like 18 year old kid, it doesn't really matter. We used to go to McDonald's before fashion shows um, and we all had six packs. So if you, live, if you look at any adolescent kids, most kids that walk the catwalks these days are 15, 16 years, years old. It doesn't really matter what you eat, you're gonna have a six pack. And so what's your view on nutrition now for achieving the lean and supple body that you strive for in your book? Like the book's all about being lean. Don't have one. The book's not about being lean. <laughs> it so is. It says absolutely. to get a lean body, the yeah. flexible body, the, the, your the, guide to being supple and, and the, lean. The byproduct of getting your body fully functional will be lean. Okay. But that's not the goal. The goal is never to be lean. The goal is never to lose weight. That, m that might happen as a byproduct. The main goal is that you're living to 100 years old pain free. That's the main goal. And what that you, comes what with you flexibility. Eat, hmm? And that's all about the flexibility. No, getting the, fle getting the flexibility back is essential. So, again, if we look at, in, into gymnastics, we can see that then it's not that they're strong. The illusion is that they're strong. They're fully functional. They're fully mobile. They're fully flexible. With that comes strength. You can't build a strong body like on the basis of inflexibility. You can't be tight, you won't ever meet a gymnast who just like can't touch their toes. Mm -hmm. All right, so if, we, if we've got, got to break it down, we've got to be like, they're fully functional, they're fully flexible. Then they, they build their strength on top of that. Now you don't build a house on sand, you build your house on stone. Okay, so you get that solid foundation is your flexibility and you build up from there. Okay, and that, that's key, but it's never about getting lean. Like sure, like, I get that that's people's goals, is to, be, is to become lean. But, you know, that's illusion and that's all, that'll all disappear. That's because transformations are so like, oh, change your body in six weeks. I'm not about that, man. Don't, don't, try, don't, don't try and change your body, ever. Accept your body fully the way it is and get flexible. Um, Facebookers, thank you for joining us. And thank you for rejoining us when we came down to sit cross-legged on the floor and stretch, which we're basically sitting cross-legged now. Sitting cross-legged now. Sit cross now. How are you happy that you're it's sitting cross-legged? It's fine, yeah, it's comfortable. Although I feel a bit slouchy. Okay. Maybe I just, just got to sit Who, up straight. Who's responsible for you feeling slouchy? Me. <laughs> so I'm sitting up straight to say goodbye now. No, a, good, a good way to sit up straight is when you're sitting cross-legged, you put your hands underneath your rib cage, mm -hmm. that, and then you pull your rib cage up. As hard as you can. So think of up. Yep. Cool. And then you go. So yeah, what you've done there strong. is you've flattened your back by pulling your rib cage up. And then you put your hands on here, and then you hold yourself in that position. Just stay like that. Yeah. Um, Facebookers, thank you for joining us. I'm sorry that we didn't get through all of your questions, but our time is up with Roger now. And if you want to see the next episode of Health Hackers, hit like on this page and then you'll get notified. And where can people find you, Roger? Well, firstly, thanks so much for having me. It's been awesome, and thanks for all the interesting questions um, that you've thrown out to me. So the, the best place to find me is roger.coach, R-O-G-E-R dot C-O-A-C-H. So roger.coach, um, and on there you can sign up and I do like a lot of tutorials and I do little bits and pieces that you can work on at home. Thanks guys, thank you Roger. See ya, Take care. bye. Thanks guys, see ya.